Um, Kamali taking you through the stories people are talking about and sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Sexism in the airline industry after the boss of Qatar Airways says this. Of course, it has to be led by a man because uh, it, is, it is a very challenging position. President Trump doesn't know the words to God bless America. We'll show you the whole awkward video. There's a new term gaining support and shock online. Trad wives will tell you more about this subsect of the subsect that is the alt-right. And it's meant to be a celebration, but he doesn't look happy. The world's oldest cat in Wednesday's Animals Doing Stuff. Top of our news feed, sexism in the aviation industry. Let's show you this video of the head of Qatar Airways, Akbar al -Baker. Of course, it has to be led by a man because uh, it, is, it is a very challenging position. And I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that uh, 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 Alan, Akbar. Uh, Alan he, will agree. Uh, sir, Akbar, said, Akbar said he was going to stop saying controversial things. He lasted 10 minutes. 10 minutes. It's not all we've got to get out of him. 10 minutes. Sorry, Akbar. You know, I have to put a little bit of uh, 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 fireworks around to uh, motivate people to ask uh, more <laughs> questions. I mean, what was that? Seriously, come on. The airline, of course, have said sorry, and Akbar is known for being lighthearted. Yes, there's nothing funnier than good old-fashioned misogyny, eh? But was it actually a joke? If you look at Qatar Airways' record with female employees, it would seem that this kind of outdated thinking runs throughout the company. They once had rules to not employ female cabin crew who were over the age of 35, and they once fired people who got married within their first five years of employment. Now, those rules have now been relaxed, but the message remains and the culture is still there, as evidenced by the boss's words. So how many women actually run airlines? Turns out, not a lot. Take a look at this picture, taken at the same conference where Al Baker made those comments in Australia. Now, it's the Board of Governors of the aviation industry that represents 290 airlines, 82% of all air traffic. Out of 26 bosses, there's one woman, Christine wemmer Rwinda, who's the CAO, CEO of Flybe in the UK. There she is there. And we want to know what you think about that story. Leave us your thoughts in the comments. All right, let's take a look now at what else is trending on social media. The designer, Kate Spade, has died. Police say that she took her own life. Her tributes have been flooding into her online. This one from the first daughter, Ivanka Trump, links to Lifeline. That's a service that's for people dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts. The comedian Kathy Griffin posted this, saying that she will be dressed head to toe in Kate Spade in tribute. And this one is from the actor David Spade, Kate's brother. He says that he doesn't know that people didn't know how funny his sister was. And he signs off his tweet saying, it's a rough world out there, people. Try to hang on. Now, Donald Trump has cancelled an awkward meeting with the NFL champs, the Philadelphia Eagles, to have an awkward sing-along. He held an event called Celebrate America after it became clear that the Eagles were not going to go to the White House because of Trump's criticism of NFL stars kneeling for the national anthem to protest against the brutality being meted out by police against black people. Instead, he showed just how much he loves his country by forgetting the words to God bless America. What a patriot. of a sensitive disposition, you may want to look away. This lucky escape happened in Istanbul. The person driving is the boy's mother. Now, he was three years old, and thankfully, as you'll see in a moment, he got out totally unhurt. Now, the Holy Month comes to an end next week, and some people around the world have been showing their support for Muslim women during Ramadan. We're really excited about it, and I think this is the perfect opportunity with Ramadan coming along um, to um, 
to raise awareness um, for all our hijabi sisters all over the world um, who are facing prejudice, they're facing bigotry, they're facing religious hatred every single day. Um, you know, there is something always in the news, you know, you only have to do a Google search to see um, something that, that's happened to one of, our, one of our sisters somewhere for wearing the hijab. Um, and we have to put a stop to that. I actually grew up in the Bronx, New York City, and uh, just uh, coming from a different country at the age of 11, I faced uh, constant bullying, uh, both physically and uh, verbally because of, uh, because of my hijab. The purpose behind the hijab challenge is to invite uh, women uh, from different faiths uh, to walk in our shoes in order to bring awareness of the challenges uh, and the discriminations that Muslim women face because of their choice of wearing the hijab. And it's a great way to build bridges of tolerance and understanding of the hijab itself and shatter any false stereotypes people might have about the hijab itself. on the opposite end of the feminist spectrum. The anachronistic Miss America pageant trended on Twitter yesterday with this announcement, and no, it wasn't about it being cancelled. We are no longer a pageant. We are a competition. We will no longer judge our candidates on their outward physical appearance. That's huge. That's huge. And that means that we will no longer have a swimsuit competition and that is official as of September 9th when we have our competition in Atlantic City. We'll also be revamping our evening gown um, competition phase as well. And so we're no longer judging women when they come out in their chosen attire, their evening wear. Whatever they choose to do, it's going to be what comes out of their mouth mm. that we're interested in when they talk about their social impact initiatives. Women of all shapes and sizes. Because we, typically yes. we see swimsuit ready bodies uh, up on that stage. And remember, the Miss America pageant started as a competition of women dressed in their swimwear. Now, the internet has generally welcomed the move. Once people get over the fact that Miss America still exists, they are posting things like this. Miss America is ending the swimsuit part of the competition this year and judging not on outward appearance, but on talent and what the contestants have to say. This is amazing, but there are concerns. Chelsea Handler tweeted, first Miss America ends their swimsuit competition, and now it's the hashtag primary election. This is the worst day for real Donald Trump since the day Ivanka got married funny there and the onion even had a helpful suggestion and really why not sweatpants and messy bun competition she looks all right and staying with weird things in america sarah is about to take you into the world of some women of the alt-right have a look there's a new term going around the internet trad wife short for traditional wife but it's not just about marriage kids and a man of the house there's a more sinister side Listen to this interview with one trad wife. And uh, a typical Korean, this is going to be so politically incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> they have stumpy little noses and <laughs> flatter faces. Well, Let's start with the alt-right movement, which U.S. news organization National Public Radio describes as an anti-Semitic white supremacist online movement. It uses websites, chat boards, social media, and memes against immigration, globalism, and feminism, which pretty much makes it a very men-only space. Swedish nationalist Marcus Fallen, who calls himself the golden one, noticed that might not be a good thing. 
you're actively pushing women away from the larger movement. So you're doing a disservice with all these anti-female sentiments. If you want to change the political situation, if you want to, for the next election in Austria, for example, if you want to get more women on board, you need to change the culture and the metapolitical situation, and then you can change the political situation. Enter the trad wife. Over the radical progressive movement and its push of feminism, homosexuality, transgenderism, pedophilia, as well as open borders and anti-white policies, got me speaking out. Alt-right social media advocating traditional wife lifestyles and... That it really is more influential to change the culture than it is to change the politics. Sound familiar? Change the culture and the metapolitical situation and then you can change the political situation. Compared to their male counterparts, their online presence is small. Most popular accounts have a following of about 10,000 in a year, but they may signal growth in a new direction for the alt-right. Where men are in politics, men are doing that kind of thing. That's the society that I prefer to live in, where women can do womanly things and men can do manly things. One that sees women backing an ideology that doesn't even want them to vote. All right, so Pakistan now, and there's a campaign there to get justice for a young woman called Khadija Sadiq. Now, she was attacked in 2016, and her attacker has had his sentence commuted. Have a look at this. Take you around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Wednesday. Harvey Weinstein says he's innocent of rape and sexual assault, uh, the charge that he faces in a court in New York. The former Hollywood producer has been accused by more than 70 women of sexual misconduct. He also faces trial in LA and London. Now he's currently free on a $1 million bail. These are pictures of the resort where Kim Jong-un will meet Donald J. Trump in Singapore. Sentosa Island was used by the Japanese during World War II as a prisoner of war camp. It's now got golf courses, of course, and a Universal Studios theme park. And Dennis Rodman, the former basketball player who's been to North Korea more than any other high-profile US name in recent years, says he may be in Singapore for the historic meeting. He's a friend of Kim's and his management company say he will go if his expertise is needed. Thanks, Dan. And in preparation for this potentially world-changing event, a cafe in South Korea is offering summit-themed lattes. If you like your coffee milky, you can now have it with the Supreme Leader's face in the foam. Moon Jae-in is also available, as is one of the two men together. Now, a video of a slow-speed vehicle chase has gone viral. Take a look at this. This is an armoured personnel carrier that was stolen from the National Guard base in Virginia, being chased by cops, lots of cops including a helicopter. Now, the APC has a top speed of just 40 miles an hour, hence the slow nature of the chase. And despite it being slow, or maybe because of it, the chase went on for two hours. A man has been arrested and an investigation is underway. And on Wednesday's Animals Doing Stuff, we bring you what is apparently the world's oldest cat. Now, this guy is called Rubble and he is 30 years old. That's 137 in human years, according to my producer. He lives in Exeter in the UK and his owner got him in 1988. Apparently, he got grumpy in his old age as his picture of him with a balloon looking fed up shows. 
Well, that's all for the news feed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow.